So why should you want a low fork? Let me try to explain that. Traditionally, cyclists have been forced to choose between two schools of bike forks. Richie forks, here, this is a carbon one, cross country, and telescopic suspension forks, such as this one. Okay, this is a pretty old one, straight steer and all that, but concepts remain the same. Uh, you have the telescopically sliding surfaces here, bushings, oil, air, and whatnot. These forks give you some great options, but they are designed for specific purposes. Rigid forks work best on perfectly smooth terrain, while suspension forks are made to deal with larger hits, like this stuff and, and, and above that, but on a rough surface, uh, where the rigid forks are lacking in terms of grip on that surface because they bounce on the small, on all the small bumps, uh, and suspension forks are plainly heavy and sluggish. Of course you can lock it out, but if you lock it out then you don't have suspension anymore, so you need to be constantly locking and unlocking and just knowing what's ahead. And another thing is that they are sluggish in terms of uh, responsiveness to hits. So a good suspension fork works really well for bigger hits. Uh, but the smaller stuff, it's, it's lacking there. It's not responsive enough. You have the, we have the friction in the stanchions, uh, and in the rebound you have the damping that you need for the big hits, but, but, but on the small hits you have the damping that, that prevents it from get, becoming ready for the next hit soon enough. Let's rewind a bit. Uh, back in 2010 uh, I was working as a composites engineer, uh, composites being carbon fiber, glass fiber, Kevlar fiber, etc for a prosthetic feet making company so we made these you know we were making these sprint legs and, and just uh, yeah prosthetic feet in general and those are made out of uh, carbon fiber or at least composites working there I, I soon realized the amazing potential in these materials uh, and I also realized being a mountain biker myself racing my cross-country bike in the weekend I realized that these properties of composites were pretty much unused in the cycling world. Okay, carbon had arrived, this is back in 2010, carbon had arrived way, be, way before that. Uh, but the thing that people were missing out on is that carbon was being used to replace aluminum and steel just because of its lightness. And this was awesome. It gave us really light and, and responsive bikes. Uh, but it got me thinking. Rigid forks like this one. This is a composite fork made out of carbon fiber. Uh, it got me thinking, isn't there more to do with composites? Can't we make a fork that maintains the qualities of a rigid fork being light and, and zero maintenance and all that. So maintain those qualities, but relieve you from that pain. Those of you that, that have used carbon forks and cross-country bikes, rigid carbon forks, you know that it is a pain it, when the terrain gets rough. It, it's, <laughs> it hurts a lot. So I wanted to create something to alleviate that pain, but still keep the benefits of a rigid. This is what we came up with. This is a Lauf fork. In another episode we're going to look at uh, the design thinking behind it. Uh, why does it look like it does? Uh, why are the springs located where they are? How do they work together? Uh, what does it uh, give you that other suspension forks don't? Etc. Uh, but for now, let's just look at it and admire.